for me, bioengineering is, is really reversed the order of the words. It's the engineering of biology. And so when I think about bioengineering, I think about how we can partner with the living world to make the things that our civilization depends upon and to get much better at doing that. Let me give you an example of something we're making in the lab here at Stanford. So we're building genetically encoded data storage. And so, for example, we can take enzymes that will recognize sequences of DNA in a genome of a cell and direct these enzymes to flip the DNA back and forth. DNA, when it's in a genome, will have an orientation. It can be pointing in one direction or an opposite direction. And all of a sudden, if you imagine flipping a piece of DNA back and forth, that becomes like a data storage register. If it's pointing towards the left, it's a zero. If you flip it and it's pointing to the right, it's a one. This is what an electrical engineer would call a set, reset, latch. You can set it in one state and reset it back, and set it and reset. It's like a light switch. It's like one of the most boring things you could make. Um, we've been working on our first set, reset, latch for three years. We've made 600 attempts at it, just building different combinations of DNA that encode the enzymes that flip other pieces of DNA back and forth. And we finally have one working. Now, I don't pretend, or I'm not even interested in building something like a four gigabyte data storage thing inside cells. I really only want to get to about eight bits. Right? If I get to eight bits, that'll let me do things like count to two to the eighth or 256. And, and the reason to, to care about counting such a small number, it's funny when you try and compare biology to silicon, say. I, I'm not, I'm not excited about it because I'm going to replace my silicon computers. I'm excited because I'm going to get computing and data storage in a place where silicon doesn't work. Every cell in my body, I could implement a counter. You get to eight bits, you start to do things like track how old cells are, how often they divide. You keep track of that. You reprogram cells as they age. You think about developmental biology and you can see how a fertilized egg might differentiate into an adult differentiated organism. Or if you think about regenerative medicine, and you want to program a pattern over space and time as a tissue regrows, you're going to need data storage, basically, to keep track of the decisions and to control the patterns that are forming as a tissue regrows. So if we could store information inside cells and get much, much better at storing information inside cells, then that'll have a positive impact on the world. But at the same time, these, these systems we're trying to encode in our DNA are 10 to 100 times more complicated than the world's most complicated state-of-the-art genetic engineering project. Right? So in order to become uh, even beginners at making these more complicated systems, we have to think very carefully about the process of engineering biology and the tools we use that make that process faster, cheaper, more reliable. My name is Drew Endy. I'm an assistant professor in the bioengineering department here at Stanford.